Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Noah from Phonog.com, and I have these four phones, and uh, I'm going to talk about them and compare them and try to tell you what I think and which one might be better or worse for you. We call it a dog fight, and this is some kind of crazy summer blockbuster dog fight. We've got the Evo 4G from Sprint and HTC. We've got the T-Mobile Vibrant from Samsung T-Mobile. It's a Galaxy S phone. We've got the Apple iPhone 4G T, and we've got the Droid X from Motorola and Verizon. Four big bad touchscreen phones, and as a, I'll talk about this in a second, there are like 15 other phones I could include in here. We had to keep it to four. I know I'm still going to talk too long, so let's get into it. All right, so from left to right, it's the Motorola Droid X on Verizon, the Apple iPhone 4 on AT&T, the Samsung Vibrant on T-Mobile, and the HTC Evo 4G on Sprint. And, uh, you know, the craziest thing about, about doing this, setting this up, looking at these phones, is thinking about all the other phones that could easily be in this dogfight, but aren't, uh, basically, because, you know, I don't even know how I'm going to get through a four-phone dogfight. Usually we do two, sometimes three. Uh, so this may be a little higher level in getting into all the details of all the phones, just because... I feel badly enough when I post a, a two-part video that gets past 20 minutes total. I don't want to be here for like, I don't want you to have to watch this for an hour, you know. But so I wanted to limit it to four phones, but I mean, you could easily have, what, you could have the Droid 2, the Droid Incredible for sure, uh, the Epic 4G, you know, the other variants of the, uh, the Galaxy S lineup. So, you know, there's a Galaxy S phone, the Vibrant, you could also have the Captivate, um, the Epic 4G, like I said, also a Galaxy S phone. Uh, you could have the, uh, the MyTouch Slide 3G from T-Mobile in there as well. Um, but, you know, had to kind of, kind of, uh, put the kibosh on anything past four. And I thought this was kind of the best representation, um, because I wanted to get one from each of the four major carriers and, in the U.S. And I also, um, you know, the Droid X a little newer than the Droid Incredible. So that's why I went with it for Verizon. And then I wanted to keep the phones with hard QWERTY keyboards, um, the Droid 2 and the Epic 4G, um, and possibly the, uh, the MyTouch slide, although I no longer have that review unit. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to keep those, you know, for a separate kind of, you know, keyboard phone shootout dogfight. But, uh, anyway, so there you go. Yeah, definitely, you can imagine the Droid Incredible right here, you know, alongside these others if you wanted to. And then the, uh, Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 just got that. Um, there's actually a little, uh, problem with my review unit, so they're swapping it out. So, uh, you know, that one uh, as well could be in here with the 4-inch display and Android and whatnot. But, you know, enough about what's not here. What is here, again, uh, Droid X. So we'll look at this one, and, and I'll try to do this a little bit differently than I, I usually do the dogfights, where I'm just going to go through each phone and kind of, you know, give you my take, you know, pros and cons, what it's best for, you know, that kind of thing. So with the Droid X, um, you know, obviously you've got the large screen, uh, the widescreen aspect ratio, 4.3 inches, uh, I believe it's 854 by 480. I always forget. Um, so on Verizon, you've got Android 2.1 with uh, the kind of refined Moto Blur system, you know, with the widgets and whatnot. Um, also comes with Skype Mobile pre-installed, as the new Android phone, the new uh, Verizon Android smartphones do, and and some of their other uh, not smartphones now starting to come with it as well. Um, you've got the option for the mobile hotspot service. If you want to pay extra to turn this into a, a 3G mobile hotspot, you've got the eight, mil eight megapixel camera on the back with HD video capture. Um, so, you know, in a nutshell, my take on this phone, uh, really, it's a great phone. It has, it, it might be the easiest, uh, all touchscreen phone to type on, um, yet. Uh, I would go with either this or iPhone and, um, iPhone might get a slight edge in terms of the multi-touch screen response. But uh, Droid X gets an edge because the screen is so large that uh, it really just makes... Oh, let's go actually go down to the message field. It really just makes typing on the phone very easy, unless you're trying to want, say one thing and type another. Um, also, the voice quality on this phone is terrific. Uh, as long as you have good Verizon service where you are... Uh, and I certainly have. As I say that, the meter drops from 3G to 1X, but that has to do with... It's ironic that I review phones for a living and my office has kind of mediocre service. So, you know, I always take these out, test them all over the place. But film here, mainly here in the office. Uh, so anyway, that's why it's jumping around. It does that for all the carriers. But um, uh, the service has been good. 
very good in the San Francisco Bay Area where I am. And the voice quality has generally been excellent. You've got a three microphone setup in this phone for noise canceling, and it actually works very well. One thing about Motorola is their phones, you know, they've always put a premium on voice quality which is cool. Uh, the camera, a little tiny bit disappointing for an 8 megapixel camera. Uh, certainly, you know, good, but uh, I'm not ranting and raving about how awesome it is. Um, the uh, camcorder shoots HD video, and again, uh, you know, good, arguably very good. Your results may, you know, kind of vary. Um, not the best HD camcorder on the market, not my winner out of these four phones for camera quality, but definitely not a deal breaker. Definitely, you know, the camera quality is good. And uh, when you're in video mode, you can use um, the microphone set up this crazy thing called scenes where, you know, you can go through these different settings and it'll change which mics are being used and how the uh, noise capture is being used and all that uh, for your video. And it actually kind of works. It's kind of neat. So, uh, again, you know, with the, uh, the Droid X, I would say um, what it's really got going for it, you know, its, it's strong points are... Uh, just, you know, the size is either a strong point or a weak point, depending on your preference. But the size plus the multi-touch capability makes for an excellent touchscreen keyboard. And the voice quality on calls is very, very good. Uh, it's, it's very good at, you know, almost everything it does. But those are kind of the two standout points for me. Uh, we'll move on to iPhone 4. And I've got it in the... Uh, so, you know, as you may know... Um, most of the, the phones that we review here are, are loaners that we get from the PR companies. So all these phones are loaners. They will go back to the PR companies. We do not own them. We do not keep them, et cetera, et cetera. Traditionally, Apple products we buy because that's the only way we can get them you know, on launch day and get our reviews out to you, our unboxings and reviews out to you when you want to see them right away. So I actually own this phone because I had to buy it. And since I bought it and own it, I was eligible for the free uh, iPhone 4 case program. Uh, to deal with the antenna issue. And so I got my case here uh, yesterday, this Belkin case, and I will take it off to show you that, uh, you know, it's ironic and, and too bad that the day before my case came, I dropped the phone. I've dropped it several times, and it's never been scratched up. But I dropped it on uh, a driveway that was, you know, kind of uneven pavement and kind of a... a cracked up old driveway and stuff, and so the phone got kind of scuffed up and, you know, whatever. No big deal. You know, it happens. Scuffs and scratches. But uh, just too bad that the very next day the free case came. Oh, well. Anyway, iPhone 4. Uh, pluses, the screen is insane. Um, it's smaller than the others, but it's super high res. I was very skeptical of the whole retina display marketing hoo-ha, but uh, it, it's a fantastic display. It really looks terrific. Um, and it's super responsive. It's the most responsive multi-touch screen out there, although the others are definitely catching up. The other thing with this phone is that it's fast. Um, the apps launch very quickly. Um, you know, the whole multitasking thing, limited multitasking, all that stuff, whatever. We're just talking about the pros of the phone. The apps launch very quickly. Everything's very quick and smooth in general on the device. I also think it has the best camera for both still and video capture out of any of these four phones. The lowest megapixel rating, 5 megapixel, but the actual quality of the images, and in particular the HD video capture, is excellent. It also has a front-facing camera, which you may not care about, but it is there if you want to, you know, you can use it for self-portraits, you can use it for, um, so it's got the front-facing camera, you can use it for self-portraits, you can use it for video calling. At this point in time, uh, the FaceTime system is only iPhone to iPhone. Supposedly that's going to open up. So, um, but again, the uh, you know five megapixel, the quality is terrific, and the video capture in particular, 720p video capture, uh, is the best that I've seen so far. I'm actually uploading right now a sample I shot today with the Epic 4G, uh, but I previewed that before I uploaded it. You know. Pretty good, so a little bit of low, especially in kind of moderate to low light, a little more pixelation than some of the others. I've, I've tried it recently. You know, the, the Droid X may be a little bit better, uh, but iPhone 4, um, you know, is, is the best one I've tried to date. Very curious to see the Nokia N8 when it ships, because uh, Nokia generally uh, Nokia generally does excellent cameras. Um, also with the iPhone, uh, another plus is the whole app thing and the whole ecosystem thing and iTunes management. Um, you know, I understand that philosophically you hate iTunes, that's fine, but in terms of a tool to let you manage your music, photos, video, uh, books, and other media between your desktop computer, your laptop computer, and your phone, 
iTunes blows anything available for Android out of the water. Uh, let me know if you found something. I know some people think like Double Twist. I tried it and I, I did not, I did, was not impressed myself. Um, that doesn't say anything about buying stuff through iTunes. I don't mean that. I just mean from managing your media. So for me, those are the pluses are, you know, and the iPod, the video player, the media player is terrific. The screen and the speed of the device, very responsive. The video capture, terrific. Uh, and obviously the selection of apps available. Uh, the downsides, obviously the whole thing with the reception, the whole antenna gate thing, and you hold it here and it's for real. I have it. It drops calls. Uh, pressing on there does kill the, the reception. And then the proximity sensor bug, where, you know, when you're in a call and you hold it up to your face, uh, it's not on all the phones, but it is on this one. A fix is supposedly coming. Fix isn't out yet. So, and then there's the AT&T performance issue, which depending on where you are, you know, is or isn't an issue. Where I am in the San Francisco Bay Area, big metropolitan area, they have made improvements. It's still an issue. The service is still not that great. So pros, really, as a multimedia computer, uh, top notch as an actual phone um, and if you want to get under the hood so to speak and really customize it you know there aren't widgets uh, all they've got you know they've got now the uh, the quick app switch system and the, the music player controls but uh, in terms of you know real customization and notifications and all that that's definitely a con uh, we'll move on to the T-Mobile vibrant uh, Samsung Galaxy S phone <laughs> 